One of the most commonly asked questions following the Second World War resembled something along the lines of, how did it all get to this point? Of course, this question refers to the agonizing lack of interference throughout Hitler's rise to power and undisputed takeover of Germany, as well as several other surrounding nations. Although it may seem from our perspective that the world turned a blind eye to the obviously malicious Nazi Germany from 1933 until 1939, the situation was far more nuanced at the time. In the Garden of Beasts by Eric Larson seeks to explore this often overlooked nuance and explain how Hitler managed to expand and maintain his tyrannical power. Larson does this through the experience of American ambassador William Dodd and his family. Dodd arrived in Germany on July 13, 1933, near the beginning of Hitler's reign as Chancellor or, more accurately, Dictator. Larson describes the Dodd family's doubt towards the seriousness of the Nazi threat, a belief common to most Americans at the time only reinforced by the apparent normalcy of Germany at their time of arrival. As shown by Larson, this regularity was entirely surface level, soon to be discovered by the somewhat naive ambassador and his family. Larson shows the true nature of Nazi Germany through discoveries made by the Dodd family that slowly enlighten them to the tense atmosphere surrounding everything from politics to everyday life. Unfortunately, as Larson makes clear by showcasing correspondence from the US, this underlying tension was not easily observable to those removed from the situation. Even many living in Germany at the time remained ignorant or deliberately unaware of the danger facing them. According to Larson, one major reason Hitler's ascent to power was neglected is that many doubted the longevity of the Nazi party, at least in its most radical form. Throughout the book, countless officials, foreign and native, constantly expressed the belief that the Nazis will fall from power, either due to infighting between Hitler and Rom, the SA commander, or deposition by the comparatively moderate President Hindenburg. Many others assumed that the Nazis would soften their rhetoric after they became a mainstream party. This assumption wasn't completely unfounded, as violence against Jews did drop in late 1933, but intense persecution at every level of society continued, and anti-Semitic violence inevitably rose again. As we now know, the Nazi party neither collapsed nor did it moderate its extreme views, but, as Larson excellently illustrates, these possibilities seemed extremely likely at some points during the early 30s. And, by the time these prospects had been completely dispelled, it was far too late for moderation within the party, and too dangerous for mass resistance outside the party. Another crucial reason Hitler wasn't stopped sooner, at least in the case of America, was fear to provoke Germany. As Larson displays through correspondence within the US State Department and between ambassadors, foreign officials tread extremely lightly to avoid offending the Nazis. This caution came from Germany's, at some points, openly militaristic attitude and hostility towards foreign governments, believing they were all run by Jews out to destroy the Third Reich. Additionally, Hitler's radical anti-Semitic behavior was somewhat ignored by many within the US government who held intensely anti-Jewish views themselves. Larson reveals that, based on surveys conducted during the 1930s, 41% of Americans believed that Jews had too much power in the US, and 20% wanted to drive Jews out of America. Unfortunately, this anti-Semitic sentiment permeated all sections of society, including the upper echelon. Especially near the beginning of the book, Larson frequently shows readers US officials with anti-Semitic views ranging from a slight dislike of Jews to pro-Nazi ideology. Even the Dodds, whom Larson presents in a largely positive light, hold anti-Semitic views common to most Americans before their experience in Germany. These previously mentioned factors provide a far more complete image of the early 1930s than is commonly presented. Larson makes sure to give readers a nuanced view of Germany, leaving no confusion to how Hitler managed to secure tyrannical power over Germany and, eventually, most of Europe. Larson presents this more accurate view of Nazi Germany through the perspective of those who would really understand it. The Dodds, the family of a US ambassador, Americans living under Hitler's regime, instead of, nonchalantly, and ignorantly observing from thousands of miles away.